Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, October 12th. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has instructed the Chairman of the Housing Agency of Jamaica, HAJ, to report several cost overruns at its housing developments to the major organized crime agency, MOCA, for investigation. Among the cost overruns was at the Luana Gardens Phase 1 scheme in St. Elizabeth, where one-bedroom units were constructed. Mr. Holness says that in 2011, some units under that project were built at a cost of $2.1 million each, a cost that went up to $11.8 million for the same size units in 2016. The Prime Minister says a similar cost overrun occurred at the hills of Boscobel in St. Mary, where the development was projected to cost $802 million, but instead cost $1.6 billion. Whatever is to be done, we will ensure that the appropriate agencies, according to their mandate in law, are notified and provided with the necessary information and direction to pursue their statutory mandate. Prime Minister Holness was speaking Wednesday as he broke ground for the delivery of 168 service lots at Phase 2 of the Luana Gardens housing development. He acknowledged that measures were underway to restructure the HAJ for greater efficiency and lauded the new management for turning around the agency from an $886 million loss in 2015-2016 to a profit of $183 million in the 2016-2017 fiscal year. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation is pursuing growth strategies through housing developments. The Ministry will engage stakeholders in the housing sector at the Regional Housing Conference scheduled for October 18-20 to 20 in Montego Bay. General Manager of the Jamaica Mortgage Bank, Courtney Winter, points out that in 2016, construction accounted for 7.2% of GDP, or $54 billion. Of that amount, roughly $37 billion, or 5% of GDP, represented mortgages. Mr. Winter says the conference will seek to raise the mortgage GDP figure by addressing the affordability of houses and financing of development. There will be papers presented to look at credit, uh, to look at access to finance, uh, and to look at how we can unlock some liquidity and funding in Jamaica to, to provide and facilitate the supply of housing. The JMB's general manager was speaking at a recent GIS think tank. The Regional Housing Conference will be held under the theme Providing Safe, Legal and Affordable Housing for All, from Policy to Implementation. The Senate has passed legislation seeking to modernize the agricultural sector to meet food security and productivity needs. Government Senator Dr. Safira Longmore says the law will provide many benefits to farmers who are important to the development of the country's agricultural sector. Self-ownership and democratic control, increased farming income, improved service, quality of supplies and products, assured sources of supplies, expanded markets, improved farm management, legislative support, local leadership development, and increased farmer control of agriculture. Among other things, the Agricultural Loan Societies and Approve Organizations Act will facilitate the dissolution of the Agricultural Credit Board and transfer the board's monitoring and regulatory functions to the Registrar of Cooperative and Friendly Societies. The bill also provides for the establishment of the Agricultural Appeal Tribunal and for the registration and regulation of the Agricultural Loan Societies by the Registrar of Cooperative Societies. Under the legislation, the Agriculture Minister is empowered to certify approved organizations. The Electoral Commission of Jamaica, ECJ, has extended the validity of the voter ID card for a period of two years. This means that national ID cards, which were originally set to expire on December 31, 2017, will be valid until December 31, 2019. During this period, the ECJ says it will continue to accept and process applications for voter registration and the voters' lists are expected to be published as usual. Other ID card services, such as replacements and corrections, will also continue to be processed. The ECJ is appealing to institutions that require the voter ID cards, such as banks and other private and public sector entities, to continue accepting the existing cards until the new 2019 expiration date. It is anticipated that a new enumeration exercise will be completed in the interim, commencing sometime in 2018. The Electoral Commission is now reviewing the device for use in that process, which is expected to capture fingerprints, photographs and facial scans, in addition to the demographic information for each elector. 
The ECJ says that if the new cards become available before December 2019, they will be phased in and the existing cards phased out. An inaugural cross-island run is now underway as part of activities to celebrate local government and community month in November. More than 200 runners from several youth groups are trekking across the island, delivering messages to the mayors in the parish capitals from the Governor General, Prime Minister, Local Government Minister, Leader of the Opposition and the Association of Local Government Authorities of Jamaica. The run kicked off at Jamaica House on Tuesday and will last until October 29, at which time the messages will be read at a national church service in the Morant Bay New Testament Church in St. Thomas. Other activities celebrating Local Government Month include the robing of the 2017-2018 Youth Mayors and Councillors, renovation of the Kingsvale Police Station in Hanover, and disaster preparedness town hall meetings in communities across the country. The significance of what we are doing this year is to emphasize the word community development a lot more community involvement, community building, community participation is a critical component of the ministry's agenda. And finally, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is appealing to parents who need help to raise their children to utilize the services of the National Parenting Support Commission. He points out that the commission is mandated to educate and support parents for the success of the nation's children. Mr. Holness is urging follows a video clip of a parent using a machete to discipline her child. The Prime Minister says that even as he empathized with the single parent's frustrations, corporal punishment as a tool to discipline children is not acceptable. He says corporal punishment's psychological damage to the child and the cost to the health sector are part of the negative cultural practices that stymie the country's development. Let us use this as a watershed moment in our society. Let us all agree that corporal punishment is not a good thing for our society. That there are other ways. Let us turn our face against that. There are other ways of applying a rod than using a machete. The Prime Minister also reiterated his administration's commitment to ban corporal punishment in all schools. The National Parenting Support Commission, NPSC, can be reached at 967-7977. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.